Hi, I'm Mike for Quick Tips for Video, and today we're going to take a walkthrough of Apple's Final Cut Pro 10 editing software. If you're new to this software or to video editing, this introduction will be useful. I'll just boot it up now, and we'll have a look at the various areas within the program. When this software was first released, it took over from a previous version of the program, but the new Final Cut was really a complete rewrite of the popular editing software, looking and working more like iMovies than the previous Final Cut. At first, professionals were not happy with the prospect of learning a whole new piece of software, and the program lacked some key functionality that the old Final Cut was capable of. But Apple has since implemented some significant upgrades to address the, uh, most of these problems, and editors are now getting used to the new interface and the workflow. And it sports several bells and whistles that the old version didn't that are very useful. But while I was writing the script for this tutorial, well, you know what, Apple did it again. They upgraded the interface, made changes that made it necessary to learn and become familiar with where things are and how they work. If I have one wish, it would be that Apple would keep the interface basically the same for a while so that busy editors don't have to constantly take time off from their projects to study the new and often not even needed changes. Having said that, this is how Final Cut Pro looks and works as of early February 2014. This is the main screen for Final Cut, comprised of several separate areas where you'll be working. Let's look at them one at a time, and I'll show you how simple it is to accomplish an edit. The first thing you'll usually want to do is import the media you'll be editing. This includes not only video clips, but also perhaps audio narration tracks, music, still pictures, maybe graphics that have been pre-made in software other than Final Cut. This is the Media Import button. When you click on it, you'll open the Media Import window. If you have a camera connected to your computer, you should find it in the uh, chooser on the left. You can also access other media from your hard drive or another connected device. It's quite simple to import media. I'm going to grab a few clips off my camera right now. Once I've highlighted the clips that I want, I'll just press the Import button and a window will pop up that allows me to store the clip identities in a current event or create a new one. I'll just make a new event for my clips. There are other choices you can consider while this window is open, but I'll just leave them as, as they are in this example. Now all you do is press the Import button and the Media Import window will close as your clips begin to load. One nice thing about Final Cut Pro 10 is that you won't have to wait long before being able to preview your clips, even as they're still loading. While the clips are loading, let me tell you about events. Media for digital editing projects used to be kept in an area called the bin. That name came from the physical bin or box that film editors would hang their 35mm film or 16mm film clips in, in the early days of film editing. Apple has changed some of the terminology with this version of their editing software. I'm not sure why, and some of the terms don't seem to make too much sense. But once you know the meanings, you'll find that the workflow is easy to get used to. So the events, which are like file folders for media, are here, and each event will display its contents just to the right in the media area here. In the media area, you can preview your video clips, stills, graphics, and sound clips, and you can also set the in and out points for each clip that you're going to use. Next to the event area is the viewer, where you'll see visuals from the media area. And also, you can see your program during editing uh, from right from the timeline. We'll get to the timeline in a moment. The next window is the inspector. This panel gives you information about any clip that you have highlighted. Also, you're able to make adjustments to the clip itself or any effects like dissolves, keying, other special effects that you'll apply to your clip. Just below the inspector is an area where you can access different themes, text options, transitional effects, etc. Notice that as I move my cursor over a theme, it's represented in the viewer window. Other buttons in this area include a collection of backgrounds, some static and some moving backgrounds. A text area for creating many different types of static or animated titles and credits. Next is the area for transitions between your shots, like dissolves, wipes, and animated flips and moves. Access to audio, 
in particular music you might have in your iTunes collection. Another media section specializes in finding photos in your iPhoto files. And finally, various filters to change the looks of your clips, including black and white, the aged film look, and one of my favorites, aged paper. Arguably, the heart of the software is the timeline. This is where you build the project from various clips, sounds, and effects you've chosen from other areas. First, though, you have to create a project file. This file used to be stored in another area of the interface, but now you can store your project along with the events for that project. This upgrade makes sense. To make a new project, you can either drop the file menu and choose the New Project option, or you could use the keyboard shortcut of Command N. This will put a new project file into the currently open event library. If you should accidentally open a new project in the wrong event, you can easily drag it to the correct event file later. Once you have the project file within the proper event, you begin your edit by either creating your opening title, or by choosing the first video clip and defining its start point and duration. That's called the in and out points. While you might define the in and out points of a clip in the event's media area, you can easily tweak those points later, if you like, in the timeline. Once you've assembled all of the edited clips, sounds, graphics, and special effects in the timeline, all you have to do is watch the video play, make any changes and adjustments that you feel are necessary, and then you'll have a finished product. It sounds simple, but it takes a lot of work usually for a complex project. Because the timeline is a magnetic timeline, the clips will stick together so that there's no black spaces between them. The magnetic timeline is tricky to get used to, but once you understand the methods of working with it, it's usually very useful. Now you can put videos, still pictures, pre-prepared graphics, audio clips, Final Cuts titles, backgrounds, and your music and sound effects into the timeline in proper order for your project. When it's all done, you have the choice, through the Share menu, of saving a finished movie onto your hard drive or any connected device at full HD, QuickTime format, 60 frames per second interlaced. Or you can create a DVD, upload to YouTube, Vimeo, or Facebook. Or create a movie specifically for devices that support MPEG-4 format at 30 frames per second non-interlaced. Now, let's edit a short project. To see that process, open Final Cut Pro Walkthrough Part 2.